the earth isn't flat. I know, I know, hold your applause. We've been onto this round earth idea for a few millennia now. Every experiment, and I do mean every experiment, even those carried out by your flat earth friends, ends up being an accidental tribute to the globe. And then there's CC, the star of today's Point and Laugh project. He's like the one band that only knows one song but keeps playing an encore. We've heard it, CC. Now, some of you say, Creaky, you're obsessed with Chris. And to that I say, maybe. But can you blame me? It's like reality TV without the budget. You keep sending me these CC classics asking for my take. What am I meant to do? Ignore him? That's like ignoring a kitten playing piano on the internet. Impossible! So buckle up because we're diving into another episode of CC's wacky world of not so flat earth. Please subscribe. Sorry, Chris, do you want us to come back when you're less busy or should we just wait? We're gonna cup of coffee. <laughs> you think coffee's real? No, wait, white with two sugars for me though, but I don't like milk coffee whitener if you have it. Oh, thank you very much. I'll get into that in a minute. Sorry, I thought we had stopped for a lunch break. Um, this video is more for uh, Google. You see, I know what you're up to, Google. I know you're suppressing us from telling the truth. But I found this video on YouTube, which is a company owned by Google. So if they are suppressing you, they're not doing a very good job, are they? All right, so that 23-year-old kid that's behind the computer watch my video right now. Thank you. Now, I'm not a YouTube expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have been doing this long enough to know that that isn't the best way to get people to subscribe to your channel, CC. But I'm always open to trying new things, so this is a personal message from me straight to you watching this now, especially if you're 23. Thank you. Have you subscribed yet? Oh, where are you going now? All right, you're back. The problem is that I have a problem with NASA, and yes, I, I might sometimes go on to the NASA live feed and um, troll the channel. Hang on a second, so are you honestly trying to tell us that you think YouTube or Google is trying to suppress your videos and your comment section because you troll another channel, namely NASA. Tell me you think you're really important without saying you think you're really important. I have enough trolls myself. <laughs> sure you don't, Chris. But I have to troll that channel because I know it's all bullshit. Yeah, yeah, NASA bullshit, we get it. You dislike NASA. But can you please me, it's a, how big is your coffee cup, Chris? I went along with it at first because I thought I could make some stupid jokes about it, but now it's getting out of hand. All the clouds are standing still. <laughs> that live feed doesn't make any sense at all to me. Well, why didn't you just start with that? I mean, if it doesn't make sense to a flat earther, then it's obviously fake. Okay. But, but the problem I have is, is that I can't leave comments on my videos to people. Well, there's a couple of potential fixes, Christopher. First of all, have you checked that your keyboard's plugged in? Because, you know, flat earther. And secondly, you haven't accidentally changed your channel category to suitable for children. Because if you have, then you can't comment. But I find it really peculiar that you think Google is out to get you. Now, they could stop you uploading altogether. But they've not done that. They've just removed your ability to comment on your own videos. Okay. That I would like to speak to. I could just give them hearts and checks. That's all I can do. When I try to press the comment button, all of a sudden things get obscured. They, you know, goes into cat lock and I'm typing and there's nothing happening. And finally, the coffee machine has shut up. Now, we hope we haven't got to listen to you slurping three liters of coffee for the rest of the video. You see how long it took me to make that cup of coffee? Well, we couldn't miss it, could we? The coffee's got a lot to answer for. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to think about during this period of time, I like milk on my coffee and sugar. Um. 
How long it took you to figure out that the earth is flat? Probably nowhere near as long as it's taking you to make a cup of bloody coffee. Took you a while, didn't it? <laughs> it sure did. Chris, we're both a bit too long in the tooth to be playing peekaboo. Boo! However, during this period of time, you think you can sit down with somebody <coughs> over a cup of coffee and teach them that the earth is flat. There isn't enough coffee in the world to be able to convince anybody that the earth is flat, so you may need to set your sights a little bit lower. It's impossible can't do it. Well, you haven't got to. It was just a suggestion. Not over a cup of coffee. Not at all. No. In fact, the only way you're going to be able to figure out that the earth is flat is to do your research. No one's going to tell you. You are joking, right? I mean, if there was nobody telling anybody that the earth was flat, then why am I here making a video about a guy in New York making a cup of coffee? <laughs> and this is just one of the many reasons why I dislike being asked what I do for a living. You gotta go down there. And it's a big one. All right, no need to show off. And Chris, come here. You and I both know that when you get to our age, it's not as big as it used to be, especially in the cold. As a flat earther, as long as I've been doing this. I had no idea. I used to look as mountains, as plate uh, tectonics. But now I know they're trees. They're what now? But now I know they're trees. Yeah, I thought that's what you said. Okay, why are they trees? The sky isn't blue because of the sun being projected onto the atmosphere. Yeah, it is. Sunlight is made up of different colours, and when it hits the atmosphere, the shorter blue wavelengths are scattered in all directions by the gases and particles in the air. And this scattering causes the sky to look blue to us when we look up at it. It's blue because it's sky ice. Sky ice? What's in that coffee? I know what we live on is a flat earth. No, I'm not usually a big fan of copying what other people do in their YouTube videos, Chris, but I really like this angle. Flat, stationary, and we're not moving. There is no movement, and you'll never feel any movement. As a matter of fact, no one's ever been able to prove that there is movement. No, I think we both know that's not true, Chrissy Poos. A 15 degree per hour drift. A pendulum? <laughs> no. Sorry guys, it doesn't work. Now the only pendulum I can think that he may be talking about is Foucault's pendulum, which is a really cool experiment that shows Earth is rotating. It's a long pendulum free to swing in any direction, and the key is it needs to be able to swing continuously and evenly. When you start it swinging in one direction, it keeps moving back and forth in the same direction. But over time, you notice the path of the pendulum seems to rotate. And this isn't because the pendulum is changing direction, it's actually the Earth rotating beneath it. No, there's no movement at all whatsoever. Snow. I'm about to release a video right now. You see how it's... Yeah, the snowflakes are coming down in different angles. Not possible on a spinning wet ball. Now, dare I ask if you're going to explain to us exactly why that is? I mean, I'm just a stupid globy, and I always thought that snowflakes didn't fall straight down due to wind and air currents. You know, as they fall, snowflakes can get caught in different air currents and winds, which can push them in various directions, which does make their path to the ground seem pretty ziggy-zaggy. Or the shape and size of the flakes. You know, each snowflake has its own unique shape and size, which affects how it falls. Some might be flat and act like a parachute, while others are more compact and fall faster. So it's none of those things then, it's actually just because the earth is flat. Ah, oh, silly me. Hell. Hell. The weatherman doesn't even 
can't even explain hail. Can I you try? As long as you don't mind, CC. Hail begins as water droplets up in a thunderstorm cloud. These clouds are super tall and reach way up where it's freezing cold. Strong updrafts in the storm, like big upward winds, carry these droplets high into the clouds where they freeze. And as these little ice balls fall through the clouds, they might get lifted up again by another updraft. Each time this happens, they collect more and more water, which freezes and adds another layer. So they get bigger and bigger, and when these chunks of ice get too heavy for the updrafts to hold up, they fall to the ground as hail. Nailed it. Storms that are coming in from California that are all, the, all of a sudden predicted to hit New York on a flat stationary land, that's possible. On a spinning wet ball, that weather over there is not going to hit New York. Now I could give another really long-winded explanation about the fact that Earth's shape has a direct impact on the weather we see, but seeing as we've spent 50% of this video talking about CC making a cup of coffee, it seems, well, it seems quite pointless at this stage. Just touching base with everybody. So no. No, you're not gonna be able to tell anybody and explain to everybody that the earth is flat over a cup of coffee. You've gotta give them little seeds and let them grow. Start with NASA. Well, duh, obviously, because everyone knows that NASA is the only space agency in the world. Well, if that wasn't one of CC's strangest videos, then I don't know what is. So, what have we learned today? CC likes milk and two sugars in his coffee. I don't like milk, only coffee whitener. And that pretty much sums up what we found out in today's video. <laughs> Today's random name is Douglas Metcalf. Remember, to be entered, all you need to do is sign up to Patreon or channel memberships like these lovely people have all done. Don't forget, if you come across a video you'd like to see me respond to, then you can join my Discord server, which is linked below, and talk to me in there. I try to pop in every day for a chat. We're getting really close to 80,000 subscribers now, so if you know anyone you think might enjoy my videos, share this one with them. In fact, if you know someone who'd hate my videos, share this one with those as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in a couple of days. Oh, you're still here then. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something new. If you did, then you'll probably enjoy this video as well. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already, and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you all again very soon, or in a few minutes, if you do decide to watch this recommended video. <laughs> Love you, bye.